I'm Greg Jarrett, and you are in the strategy room. There are growing indications now the United States might want to reconsider its Afghan withdrawal plan. A senior U.S. official told Reuters that the American military bases in Kandahar and Jalalabad are likely to remain open beyond the end of 2015. This contradicts, of course, President Obama's plan announced last May to draw down in forces. Here now with reaction, our political strategist, Basil Smichael Jr. and Lee Carter. Welcome. First of all, uh, Basil, I mean, these are crucial bases, aren't they? They are crucial bases, and you have a new president that uh, the White House seems to be getting along with, and that's, I think, the most important issue here. Um, there were some indications that, uh, the, that foreign policy officials were uh, battling the White House on whether or not this should, this should be a, at a more immediate closure. Um, but I think what's most important here is that the relationship between the two countries is, uh, seems to be on better footing. And I think for whatever uh, our military, uh, whatever we want to do militarily, um, I think can happen there. Um, so there's no sort of rush to come out, even if it contradicts some earlier statements by yeah. the president. You know, Lee, um, the collapse of security forces in Iraq led to the rise of ISIS terrorism. Uh, perhaps a hard lesson learned here by what some are calling a very naive commander-in-chief in President Obama, who cared more about his legacy in getting out of two wars than he did about uh, terrorism. Yeah, I think what we need to do right now is we need to be really careful, right? Because we're all agreeing that we need to be staying. And so what Obama needs to do is be really careful that he doesn't start trying to really explain why this is different than ever before. Let's just agree that this is the right thing to do and let's move on. And I think the Republicans on the other side also need to sort of be careful about not doing the I told you so politics because ultimately it's going to backfire for them as they go into the presidential debates. I mean, there are a lot of former and current military leaders who think this withdrawal, pull-out plan, pull-down plan is premature. Yeah, and I and but I think you have to balance it with what not only what the president did promise the American people, but what the American people wanted. You know, they were looking for a withdrawal because we were uh, we were fighting war on two different fronts. So they were there was no stomach, I think, for an extended. Uh, undetermined uh, military presence in multiple countries on multiple fronts. The president campaigned on this. He made a promise, and it's in, in a way he's being criticized for following through on a promise. I do understand that the ISIS threat um, is something that he himself has agreed was not, uh, I don't want to say wasn't handled appropriately, but he underestimated. Right. Um, and he has said that. Uh, but uh, so I do think that there is some uh, element here of ISIS is becoming a growing threat, and we need to make sure that our presence is is, is stable around the globe. But isn't it lead a question of selling it to the American people if they're tired of a couple of wars? You can end a war, but keep a huge military presence there for security purposes. My goodness, <laughs> we've done it for decades in Germany, in Japan. And then we've got 30,000 troops protecting South Korea. Uh, we're not still literally at war with South Korea uh, or with North Korea, but we keep huge numbers of troops there. Couldn't the same have been done here in both Iraq and Afghanistan? Yeah, absolutely. I think the number one concern Americans have right now in that region is, are we going to be safe? Are we going to be protected? And I think what he really needs to do is, is do a great job in selling to the American people why this is the right thing, why we're going to be safe. And I think it's really important that he doesn't get into Professor Obama trying to explain to us exactly why this is different and he doesn't have to go down rabbit holes about why things were different in the past. I think what he really needs to do is make us all feel confident and comfortable that this is the right thing for America, Americans, and this is going to make the world a safer place. Is this Professor Obama, as Lee has described him, uh, turning a, a blind eye and a deaf ear to some of his own esteemed military commanders who said, don't do this. Um, he, I don't know if he turned a deaf ear to it. I think he wanted to be convinced, and I think uh, I think he is being convinced in part because... Grudgingly? I don't know if it's grudgingly. I think it's in part because you actually have a partner in the Afghanistan president who seems to be um, agreeing with him in this regard. But I do think it's a little different. I think it's different because in the cases of Germany or, or North Korea... Um, Japan. Uh, Japan, I think you have, uh, you're not putting uh, the military in harm's way. Here, I think you, there is a stronger uh, sense that the military, boots on the ground, those consultants, 
will be in harm's way. So I do think that requires a different explanation. What if their backup and their principal job is to train Afghan security forces as perhaps it should have been continuing in Iraq? I think that I think if that is the real key, because we've talked about that with ISIS as well, right? No boots on the ground. I think if that is the key, then I think there there is an explanation he needs to give to the American people and just leave it at that. So there is so you don't go further down the rabbit hole as yeah, you said. Exactly. <laughs> That was Michael Jr. Lee Carter. Good to see you both. Thanks so much. And check out foxnews.com for the latest on this story on Afghanistan. I'm Greg Jarrett. Thanks for watching.